Now that I have the wires installed in the walls, now I have to install my additional insulation and the wall finish. I've added a couple extra pieces of strapping, as you can see. These are in place for any kind of hinge or sort of bracket that I might think will be fastened on the wall. So for example, when the bed is going up, it's gonna need some sort of latch to keep it in place. And so I've installed these so that whatever receiver is on the wall has something nice to sort of be fastened to. And similar up here, if I wanna have shelving or, you know, sort of hooks or something for gear, for example, I have sort of two strips along the length of the trailer, something to screw into so that those things are secure. Uh, because I will be installing quarter inch panel board, that obviously won't be strong enough to secure anything. So that's the reason why I'm putting those extra pieces. Okay, you can see here that I'm basically done insulating on this side. I just need an extra little slip there, but I'll probably have some leftover from doing this wall. Now, everything's nice and flush and clean. I have my little cutout for my shore power inlet onto this side now. Okay, so that's all the additional insulation on the walls. You can see this is all nice and flush now, and I have my strapping so I can connect my uh, wall finish too. So I cut out a little notch here because I'm gonna have my light switch and I'm gonna need some sort of access to run the wires. And then I also left about a half inch gap all along that rail there because that's where those wires run. The same thing is happening here at the bottom with this 4-3 wire. Essentially, I just have this foam sort of hinged with the tape right now. This wire will run at the base there nice and clean. Um, and also I cut out the notch here because I will need some space to mount this conduit connector. But I can't do that yet because I need to cut to size my wall panel and make the hole for this little bit. That's all gonna happen sort of at the same time. Uh, I'm also gonna have to notch out the insulation a bit here so that this has room to get installed. And as you can see here, the door's basically fully open and I'm probably gonna mount this about, you know, around here or so a little bit lower than the uh, door so that when it, the door closes, it, it coils properly. Lined up the vent hole. I measured basically the distance from the edge to the top of the circle and the edge to the outside edge of the circle. And so that gave me a good uh, reference point. Today I'm gonna work on actually trying to finish the walls. I picked up some 2.7 millimeter uh, white ash finish panel board. That will be to finish the inside of the walls. So I'm gonna attempt to do that today. But first I think I'm just gonna clean up this workspace because it is an absolute disaster. Now that's much better. I'm gonna use my skill saw to sort of try to get the straightest cuts possible and I'll probably end up installing a floor base or something to sort of finish it up nicely. Uh, hopefully this stuff doesn't chip too much when I cut it. I might have to put some tape down or something on the cut line to try to save this little texture stuff but we'll see when we get to it. I'll probably do the lower strips first on each side because those are the sort of simplest. Uh, this one here is gonna have to 
I'm gonna have to line up the vent hole and the hole for the flexible conduit. This side here is also very simple, just having to cut out the vent hole over there. This one here is gonna be tricky because I have to cut out the window properly uh, and line it up so it doesn't look too junky. I'm not too sure how I'm gonna finish it. If I can get a really nice cut that's accurate, uh, hopefully, you know, that's the goal. I might look into uh, if there's any kind of trim that is flexible enough to sort of do that radius. But again, I'm not sure yet. I'll sort of deal with it once I get to that point. Here we go. some sandpaper along my cut <clears throat> and it cleans up really nice. So what I'm doing basically is just drawing my cut line and then I draw the offset distance from the edge of the guard here to the blade and then that uh, allows me to line up a fence sort of to follow and then I support the board off the ground using some just scrap wood uh, and I support basically both sides of the cut so that the board is sort of stable and level. So that's sort of been the process. So there's the first board cut. Nice finish. Cut turned out great. I just need to not leave myself such tight tolerances because I cut this slightly too big, you know, about an eighth of an inch. And so I'm gonna have to shave down the edge somehow, which it would have been better just to leave the piece a little bit short and then sort of fit into place. I actually figured out that, so this is about two and a half inch. Uh, I kind of got cut with the pattern here. So actually if I put this piece up the top and then have a piece of trim that's two inches then I'll end up with like sort of an equal uh, pattern so that that'll be fine so that's the first piece sort of just press fit in place I don't have anything holding it in yet I will add some glue and some little finishing nails to sort of keep that all in there nice and tidy but uh, yeah it turned out great I like this detail a lot the piece of maple here is gonna be left exposed and then this this wall panel finishes nice and flush with that and like what I said earlier the uh, I guess pattern here because this piece is sort of cut at half once I add my floor trim it'll sort of give that appearance that you know it's sort of equal pattern
I got a wall finish in my trailer. Woo! This is awesome. Finally starting to see some finishes come together. First wall panel's in. Turned out really nice, really clean. It's nice, solid, and finishes basically flush with this piece of wood here. So, okay, so uh, I'm just gonna keep marching forward here and uh, do the rest of the trailer. The next step is I'm gonna do this side so that I can finalize my wiring loom here and finish the insulation, run the wire back, and sort of have that installed. So uh, that'll be the next little adventure. And yeah, that's going to be the same application, sort of rinse and repeat for the other walls. I had to go out and buy yet another tool. Uh, this is a four inch pole saw bit and it needs a special adapter. Uh, this will be used to cut the holes for the vent uh, on both walls. And also actually this will serve me in the future for my uh, heater inlet and outlet. Well, good thing I checked. I went out this morning and got a four inch hole saw bit at the store before coming to the work. And I just checked and obviously it's not the right size. I need a three inch, not a four inch. So back to the store we go and there was a waste of money. So this side's now done. This one obviously was a little bit trickier because I had to run my wires through when installing this panel, uh, making sure that there was enough room to sort of get the wires looped and ran down to the end. And so yeah, this is that detail basically done now. I have a nice flexible conduit running power from my power source to my door. I'm gonna show you guys this thing in action now. So closing the door, see that the cable coils up and basically is gonna rest like so. Pretty tidy, pretty neat. I'm actually very happy and proud of that. I am not doing what traditionally people do and basically they wall off this back door galley and then they have a side door entrance. I only have the one entry and one exit. I still want my kitchen at the door, but basically it's gonna be instead of in the trailer portion, taking away from my sleeping area, it's gonna be in my door itself. These connections are nice, as you can see. So yeah, 
Awesome. Holy, if you want a physical struggle, try laying four by eight sheets on a wall by yourself. I have a huge respect for uh, drywall finishers now, holy. But, look at this, we have freaking walls in the trailer. Okay, I actually didn't know this, but uh, there's a little dial here. I don't know if all nail guns have this, but there's a little adapter drive switch. Originally, I was putting the nails in, some of them would actually go all the way through the panel, and so I was like having to add more. And then I realized about that setting. And so I set them so that they wouldn't go through the panel and I can just go with a hammer and finish it. And I'm super excited how that finished. Look how clean that is. That was awesome. So I got my wires running through, a little hole here for where the switch is gonna be. I'll have to clean up that hole later on. I just don't know what size the switch panel will be. Finish this something. Somehow I might add like a little bulkhead uh, because I need to sort of hide this here. And then you won't see any of this because the cedar ceiling is gonna make up that thickness. So it's turned out really nice and clean. As you can see, everything's nice and flush. So yeah, that's awesome. Today I'm going to finish installing the wall panels. I just have this one side left to do, the side with the window. I would like to do this in one panel. And so obviously it's gonna be tricky to get the cutout for the window done and lined up properly. I think I've come to terms with it's not gonna be perfect. And whatever gap I do leave, I can probably just figure out a trim, something nice to finish that. Uh, so yeah, here we go. Just a quick tip, if you're installing windows in your trailer and plan to do a wall finish, keep the template that you used because it'll come in handy for when you're doing your wall paneling. Unlike me, I threw that out and so now I have to measure off the window and come up with another template. <laughs> found an old crusty bucket. This radius seems to be pretty much perfect for the same radius as the window corner, which is good because I can use that as a template now.
I got the window roughly cut out. It's uh, it's not perfect by any means, but it's close. I just need to hold it in place and then mark out where I need to sort of sand some edges a bit. I can't do this by myself. It's too big and it's too awkward and it keeps falling off. So I called my wife for some backup. So I'm just waiting for her to show up so I can use her help to finish this board. All right, that's the walls installed. This is looking fantastic. I'm super happy with this. Relatively painless minus these big pieces that I needed help with from my wife. Starring Jessica Tremblay. Panel holder expertise. <laughs> Can't wait to get actual lights, like nice lighting in here. On to the next thing. Yeah. 